Hi, welcome to 7 Fact, the channel where you get to watch a video about every single country on earth. In today's video we're going to explore the bailiwick of Jersey, a crown dependency. But keep in mind that there's a playlist containing all the British territories, so be sure to check that out too. Also, please remember to subscribe if you wish to see the two new videos I upload every Wednesday and Saturday. Jersey is one of the Channel Islands, in the English Channel, just off the coast of Normandy. Together with Guernsey, they are considered to be the remnants of the Duchy of Normandy, whose dukes went on to become the kings of England. Jersey is not part of the United Kingdom, instead it's a crown dependency. This means its head of state is the British monarch, while the United Kingdom is responsible for the defense and international relations of the island. Officially, Jersey is a bailiwick, a traditional administrative region run by a bailiff, a legal officer that acts as the overseer. Jersey is a self-governing parliamentary democracy with its own financial, legal and judicial systems and with the power of self-determination. During the English Civil War in the mid-17th century, King Charles I was trialed and executed and England was for a short period a de facto republic. His son, Charles II was proclaimed king in 1649, while he was in Jersey, where he was living in exile. This is a complicated but fascinating bit of history, but we're not going to go into details here. What you need to remember is that after Charles II managed to take back his throne, he wanted to thank Jersey for the help given during his exile. So he gave Vice Admiral George Carteret, the bailiff, a large grant of land in the American colonies, in between the Hudson and Delaware rivers. He promptly named the land New Jersey, which later went on to become the modern state within the American Union. During World War II, Jersey was occupied by German forces. Jersey, together with the rest of the Channel Islands, were the only part of the British Isles that were occupied by the Wehrmacht. The islands were one of the last places in Europe to be liberated, having been under German occupation for nearly five years. During this time, many fortifications were built using Soviet slave labor. However, they didn't help after D-Day in 1944, when supplies from mainland France were interrupted and food became scarce. By the time the islands were liberated, both the occupiers and the occupied were facing near starvation. May the 9th is celebrated to this day as Liberation Day and it's the national holiday of both Jersey and Guernsey. Even though it's a crown dependency, Jersey is a self-governing country, so naturally it has its own capital city. With a population of 33,000 people, St. Helier is the one to own this title. The city is thought to have been settled by the Romans during the time they occupied Gaul. Initially, St. Helier was a very small fisherman village, which was all but depopulated due to repeated attacks from pirates. Helier, a 6th century Christian hermit, came to the island as a spiritual guide. But he also helped save lives, as he was able to see the sails of approaching attackers from his vantage point on a tidal islet. When he saw them, he would signal ashore, and the locals would hide. This frustrated the attackers, who eventually caught and beheaded him with an axe. Since then, the settlement was known as St. Helier. Nowadays the city is much larger thanks in part to large land reclamations, meaning that many of today's streets used to be occupied by sand dunes and the sea. Jersey is not a big island. It measures just over 14 kilometers in length and 8 kilometers in width. However, the area of the island varies. And that's because Jersey boasts some of the biggest tides in the world. When it recedes, the immense body of water surrounding the island seems to disappear into the horizon, only to surge back to shore with alarming speed, making Jersey shrink by a fifth. 
These huge shifts have caught out many tourists and locals who, while exploring the seabed at low water, have suddenly found themselves cut off from dry land. The tides can measure up to 12 or more meters and can rise by 7 centimeters per minute, and this happens twice a day. This is an awesome, albeit scary spectacle of nature, so if you wanna check it out, be sure to take care. Although many visitors don't realize it, Jersey has its own unique language. Called Jerier or Jersey Norman, it was widely spoken until at least the 1800s. The language is also known as Jersey Norman French, even though it is different from standard French. Although it fell from favor and the island is now English-speaking, traces of this ancient language remain. Today, the authorities work to promote the study of the language and many primary schools give classes in the subject. Don't worry though, English is more than enough for you to get around Jersey. Elizabeth Castle is an amazing 16th century fortification, located near St. Helier. The fortification itself is a sight to behold, but its location is even cooler. The castle was built on a tidal island, meaning that only during high tide the rock formation becomes an island. So getting to Elizabeth Castle is pretty exciting. To access the castle you basically have two choices, both of which depend entirely on the tide. In high tide you can take the castle ferry, which will carry you over the sea. But in low tide, you can go to the castle simply by walking along a causeway. Now how awesome is that? And there you have it. These were 7 facts about the Bailiwick of Jersey. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Share your thoughts downstairs in the comment section and afterwards check me out on Facebook or Twitter. A good way to offer more support to this channel is through Patreon. Link in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.